Kimberley region of northwestern Australia. It's a gigantic sandstone plateau, six times the size of Tasmania. Slicing right through the very heart of it all is the vast gorge of the Prince Region River. Because of the harshness of the land here, very few people have been through here and some areas remain virtually unexplored. It's a trip that I've been looking forward to for a long time. Unfortunately for me, the only way I'm going to find bush tucker in the Kimberleys is by walking across the countryside. He'll be back in a couple of weeks to pick me up up the other end of the uh, Prince Region Gorge here. At least he tells me he will. He's a mate of mine, so I hope he turns up. But before I go, I've got something very special to show you just behind these sand dunes here. This is it. This is a boab tree. And I guess if anything's the symbol of the Kimberley country, it's got to be this fellow here. They dump these nuts throughout the year all over the ground. And they're pretty interesting bits of kit too. Let's have a listen. That's the nut inside rattling around. When we analyse this stuff here, we find it's got a pretty high level of vitamin C, ascorbic acid. And then we found after four and five years when we analysed nuts again that were that old, that it was still hanging around in pretty good quantities. So basically what you've got here is a food time capsule and a pretty good one at that. This fella stands alone by itself. A bit grotesque and all the rest of it, but he also is pretty majestic, I reckon. I'll break this open and we'll have a look inside. There we go. Oh, he's a bit mouldy and mangy. That's what you've got. A little bit shriveled up, this fella, at the moment. You split him in half. And you can eat this white pith here. Tastes a bit like dry powdered milk. But it's not too bad. Well, I guess you could live off it. This particular tree is very important, historically. I'll show you on the other side. How about that? HNC Mermaid, 1820. That's 168 years ago. His Majesty's Cutter. They put in here out in the bay, careening bay. They had to careen the boat, so they bunged it up there on the beach. I guess the sailors had a bit of spare time and put this in the tree. Funnily enough, the captain of the mermaid, a bloke called King, reckoned that these trees were deformed by disease, and he had no idea that these nuts were a good source of food. And that was not an unusual mistake for those days. Hey, look at that. This is a little bit of bush tucker that's got its own bit of history here in Australia. Back in the days when the sailors back there on that bow tree carved their name on the mermaid there, 
this fella wouldn't have been growing here because he was only introduced from Argentina around about 1880. He's a bush passion fruit, passiflora. You pick him off like that when he's ripe and he's nice and gold like that. Split him open and all those seeds there, you can eat them raw. Just like passion fruit. Good stuff. Birds like them and that's why they're scattered all over northern Australia these days. They're very, very common all over the place. Of course, King and his men on the Mermaid were charting only the coastline. The interior remained unknown until an explorer called George Gray came up this way and he landed an expedition right here in this gully. He was attempting to travel overland from here in the Kimberley all the way down to the Swan River with Perth now schemes. With him he had sheep and ponies and dogs and all sorts of stores. Like most of the white fellas who came up here, they had no idea how to live off this land. They drove their stock over these barren looking rocks and yet there was a bit of a feed right beneath their feet. These are a little fella called mangrove snail. Well I'll tell you what, Aboriginal people up here in the Kimberleys call them happy snails. They reckon once you eat them they make you happy. The little characteristic about them is that they always crawl up out of the water. They're frightened of getting drowned, they tell me. You can boil them up and make a bit of an entree out of them. They're not bad either. Gray, despite his courage, was no bushman. He never did complete his journey and he was lucky to escape with his life. I'm going to try much the same sort of route, not to the Swan River, but right into the heart of the Kimberley. But unlike Gray, who tried it in the middle of the wet season, I'm doing it without the added problems of torrential rains, which makes this country virtually impassable. But even after all these years, there's still only one way to get up into the high country. Not a climb that I'd like to do every day of the week. But the one thing it does do for me is separate me from the saltwater crocodiles. There's no crocodile going to follow me up here. But this high country up here does have its rewards. 